outstanding students in Kaohsiung Taiyuan District received new shoot scholarships. City volunteers in Malaysia help a care recipient and her elderly parents move to new home. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Sandy Yan. Thank you for joining us. In August, Typhoon Lupit brought torrential rain that destroyed the Mingbaka Bridge in Kaohsiung's Taoyuan District. 18 volunteers had to circumvent the damaged bridge, lengthening their trip to the village. Volunteers were there to present new shoot scholarships to outstanding students. Among them, four brothers and sisters of the Xie family received the awards. Take a look. Standing on the podium with his younger brothers and sisters, Xie Hongyuan is currently studying in the Department of Tourism at Daren University. As the elder brother, he studied hard and set an example for his younger siblings. He was awarded a new shoot scholarship and a laptop at the same time. And the first thing he thought about was his younger siblings. This is the first time I got this scholarship. I want to give some to my brothers and save a little for tuition and other fees for the laptop. I will give priority to my youngest brother because there are relatively few resources in the mountain areas. So I want to let my brothers and sisters use it first, allowing them to do something like digital learning. I will save the scholarship money. I will use my laptop for online learning with teachers and classmates. The eldest son is in college and the younger sister is still in elementary school in a remote village. Although the family struggles economically, four brothers and sisters in the family can all receive the scholarship award. I am really touched. I hope my children will work hard and continue to work harder so they can receive scholarships every year. The most important thing is when they have the ability to contribute to society in the future, they can be compassionate and help those in need. After the typhoon in August, the damaged bridge and the road were not yet repaired. Volunteers had to drive 100 kilometers to reach Zhangshan Elementary School in Taoyuan District. We have been with them for a while, but they still have to grow and develop by themselves and slowly change their lives. Volunteers' compassionate efforts such as providing these scholarships have allowed the students to continue the circle of love. Two years ago, Chen Tingyi, an 18-year-old student, suddenly fell into a coma in a school race. After being rescued, she was semi-paralyzed and could only rely on the care of her elderly grandma. Therefore, Tsuji volunteers refer her to Taichung Tsuji Hospital. After treatment, she is able to speak and move again. 18-year-old Tingyi was brought up by her grandmother. She was still a medical student two years ago, yet an accident happened suddenly. After finishing the 800-meter race at school, she fainted suddenly. Back then, her coma index was 3 and her life was at risk. Her life was saved, yet she became half-paralyzed. At that time, when volunteers went to visit them, what they saw was a scene of both sharing the same bed. After she was discharged from the hospital, she had nowhere to go and also was not able to do rehabilitation. What we saw was she and her grandma sharing the same single bed. She was then referred to Taichung Ziji Hospital for treatment, and her condition has gradually improved. She can improve to this state. It's really worth it. I hope she can take good care of herself. She said she wanted to cook for grandma because her grandma was very hard to make money. Wiping away grandma's tears, she went from a coma to standing up on her own, and now she's resumed her studies in a special education school. I also made an agreement with her. I asked her to come help me when I'm old. I hope I can work in Tsuji when I grow up. Now Ting Yi uses her beautiful smile as a reward and feedback to volunteers' care, welcoming a bright future with happiness. Master Zheng Yang went to Taoyuan Jing Hall to have a warm discussion with the Taoyuan city government team. Mayor Zhou Wenchan thanked Tsuji for providing Jing Halls as vaccination station and caring for medical workers and the public. Tsuji assisted the public in vaccination and provided the best service, so people like going to the Jing Hall. The mayor of Taoyuan led the city government team to have a warm discussion with Master Zheng Yan. They thanked Tsuji for providing Taoyuan and Bada Jingxi halls, as well as Zhongli grounds as vaccination stations, giving out vaccination to almost thousands of people every day. Volunteers' caring service also made Jingxi Hall to be the first priority of the public. 
We are so thankful to the Master for bringing this blessing to Taoyuan. Today's pandemic prevention also let everyone witness Taiwan's love. We drink Zhiji's liver tea every day. It makes us feel very comfortable and warm in our heart. In the past, when people went near Zhiji Jing Si Hao, they didn't dare to go in. But now, with this opportunity, I believe more people will get to know Zhiji. Healthcare workers take the responsibility to safeguard people's lives. In Taoyuan's first year and blessing ceremony, team members, volunteers, honorary board members, education and other teams work together to perform the sutra of innumerable meanings in virtuals, just like everyone assuming different responsibilities during the pandemic. We also supported the vaccination service in Taipei Zhiji Hospital. After the pandemic slowly eases, we will continue to care for the patients we serve before and start promoting vegetarianism. Everyone is united and is very powerful. Gathering the love of everyone, the honorary board members team has raised 88 million NT dollars for the vaccine funds. Mo Taoyuan just happened to host a religious festival which has been long waited for 60 years. The citizens go vegetarian and pray together. The Tsitsu family has added 75 newly certified honorary board members who have made a wish to cultivate blessings, walk on the Bodhisattva path, and help more people in need. On August 18th, the ITV reported on Zhushan Charity Association's 22 years of road repair work. Upon seeing the news, Mr. Xiao was very touched, and he decided to d donate the truck to the association. He made a down payment of a truck valued at one million NT dollars and hopes to seize the moment and do the right thing. Wearing an orange T-shirt, Mr. Xiao is here to hand the truck keys to Zhushan Charity Association's founder. His spirit of great love is very admirable. I feel emotionally moved by this. He worked hard to earn money. He also wakes up at 3, 4 in the morning for work. The truck's donor, Mr. Xiao, started business at the age of 48 years old. Through 13 years of hard work, he now owns a noodle production factory. During August this year, Mr. Xiao saw Dai TV's news report as he wants to contribute in the World Repair Charity Fund. I saw the news and I was touched. I used some of my savings in order to buy a road repairing truck for them. With this, they can transport asphalt and tools around easily. Making a down payment of 400,000 NT dollars for one million NT dollar truck, Mr. Xiao didn't donate because of his desire to spend money, but it was out of the importance of transportation. If I can save up to 1.4 million NT dollars and then donate the truck, maybe more people will not suffer from falls and injuries on the road. By donating now, I'm contributing to the greater good, and I believe that this will benefit more people in the future. The charity association, under Mr. Xiao's assistance, decided to increase the range of road work, benefiting the local community. Rituals in temples normally use a lot of flowers, but after the ceremonies, flowers are often thrown into garbage trucks. In Taichung City, Qingshui District, a cleaning team utilized creative ideas, extracting water from recycled flowers and giving them new life. In the past, after temple rituals, flowers are often thrown away like garbage, a waste of resources. This not only increases garbage amount, but also is a waste of resources. In Taichung's Qingshui District, a local cleaning team utilized their creativity, turning recycled flowers into cologne. After cooking the flowers, good smells start to rise from the pot, and after applying ice in order to freeze the steam, cologne is made. Let it rest and cool down. 
Using recycled bottles, after this infection, the colognes is poured onto the facial mask. This can be put onto faces for refreshing effects. It feels very moisturized and it smells good. My face feels fresher after using this. After adding in antibacterial moisturizers, the atom can be applied to faces for beauty purposes. For every 10 kilograms of recycled flowers, 100 cc of cologne can be extracted. The leftover petals have further usage. We can use the petals for composting and to provide continuous nutrition to flowers. After recycling flowers and turning it into cologne, the cleaning team promoted this product to local communities, hoping to spread eco-friendly ideals to more people. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, a Tzu care recipient, Sophia Zhang, recently faced the problem of relocation. Upon learning about it, volunteers mobilized to help her move, hoping that their family can live comfortably in the new environment. <laughs> the volunteers were slowly adjusting the position of the furniture at the corner of the narrow stairs. No matter how heavy the furniture was, the volunteers worked together to move all onto the truck. For the house she lives in now, the house owner has already sold the house, so she has found a new house to rent nearby. Tzu care recipient Sophia Zhang lives with her parents. As both of them are old and sick, she is unable to deal with the moving alone, so volunteers were mobilized to help. Today we have gathered a total of 19 volunteers, including our recycling bodhisattvas, charity bodhisattvas and our community team, to help our care recipient to move. When the old furniture was moved to the new house, volunteers helped to locate them one by one. Even though everyone is busy, they still spare some time to come help us move. We are very touched and grateful. Filled with sweat, volunteers finally complete the moving task as they wish Sophia family a new life. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, a couple's son suddenly passed away in 2017, leading them to live in sorrow and pain. With the company and encouragement of Tsuji volunteers, they changed their mind to help people and also gradually came out of the pain. Sometimes if I think of him, I would cry and keep asking him, where are you, where are you, please come back. Thinking of her beloved son, certified Tsuji volunteer, Oh Mei Yi is still distressed. He rarely got sick, yet he suddenly fell ill and even passed. It's really hard for me to accept. Volunteers accompanied the couple all the way and encouraged them to help others. Through giving, they gradually came out of the pain. When my child was studying, he has done some volunteer work. He would ask me to take him back after finished. I will continue to fulfill my son's wish to be a volunteer. He has been volunteering with his child's new fulfilled wish. Apart from turning little love into great love, he also donated his gold jewelry, kept for 40 years, experienced the feeling of giving. When we went out all day, we would worry about the gold jewelry. He didn't know where to keep and worried that it would be stolen by thieves, so I suggested my wife to sell it all and donate the money to Zhiji. Sometimes I would stand there and talk to them. They seem to listen to me and keep looking at me. Sometimes I'll be very happy when I see them. With a change in mind, they became more happy, and because of giving in the crowd, their lives are more fulfilling now. Before, they didn't smile so much. After joining Tzu they became more cheerful. They have also learned a lot of things and their lives are more fulfilling. Her husband was originally to accompany her and drive her wherever she went. Then she slowly inspired him to go together. They are really walk on the same bodhisattva path side by side.
before, when I didn't know about recycling, I used to throw it in a trash can. Now I know how to sort recyclables. The loss of their beloved son is heart wrenching, yet the loving care of the Dharma families made them stand up again. Now both of them have gone out of sorrow, walking on the Bodhisattva path together. In Malacca, Malaysia, a couple runs a vegetarian restaurant, yet they didn't care much about a balanced diet. When Tsujin Malacca chapter held a 21 days healthier meat challenge event and invited them to make lunch boxes, they realized that a healthy vegetarian diet should pay more attention to a balanced nutrition. So they called on all employees to join this challenge. Being a vegetarian for a long time, but neglecting the importance of a balanced diet, a couple who runs a vegetarian restaurant would thanks the ingredients of meal boxes. We only provide what we can eat to others. As my employees sometimes eat a lot of fried food, I would like to instill a better concept to them because they are still young. So I started to inspire them. The restaurant cooperated with Tsuzi Malaka Chapter to organize the 21 days healthier meat challenge. <laughs> Using less oil and less salt to cook, the physical fitness of the both and employees have gradually improved. At first I was quite reluctant because we have been eating heavy taste food for so many years, but after two or three days I've already lost one kilogram when I weigh. We did it from scratch to regain our health. Now when we eat, we can taste the original flavor of the food, like being curd with the smell of bean, while vegetable with its own aroma. Our taste buds have changed a lot. My gastrointestine has the most improvement. I used to have severe bloating before, but now it's already gone. Seeing everyone regaining their health is the only comfort to me. The restaurant owners encourage their employees to eat healthy vegetarian diets so that they can have a cleaner body and a as we grow older, our body functions start to decline day by day. However, a table tennis hall in Puchong Selangor, Malaysia, allows many elderly people to have a good place to exercise and maintain good physical and mental health. Staring at the ball intensely and hitting the ball back and forth, 66-year-old Grandma Deng Jingying was learning seriously. Her senior age does not limit her emotion in battling her opponent. For those who don't know how to play, they can also come to learn. Because there are coaches here, you can learn it from the scratch. Everyone can play ping pong. The table tennis hall in Puchong, Selanya, provides a good place for many elderly people to exercise. About 95% of the participants are adults. Some of them are even 60s or 70s. We just want to provide a good place for these adults to play table tennis. To me, it's a sense of belonging. It's like a big family because everyone can join. Playing ping pong can exercise one's whole body and regulate one's emotions. Regardless of age or mobility, it's easy to learn. My foot was hurt in a car accident. Fortunately, it was reconnected, but the connection was not perfect. Yet it doesn't matter, I'm still able to play ping pong. Life relies on exercise, which is good for health. The older you are, the more you have to move. The global fight to reduce carbon and slow global warming has led many well-known industries to make carbon reduction commitments. In Taiwan, heavyweight technology companies formed the Taiwan Climate Alliance and took the lead in achieving carbon neutrality in the sub supply chain. Discarded mobile phones are transformed into gold through a special recycling process. Solar Applied Materials Technology explores such urban mines, becoming a qualified gold refining manufacturer by Apple for many years. It's also a major domestic manufacturer. I want to give you a number. We only worked with these eight precious metals in 2020. We have recycled 400 tons in total. If we buy these 400 tons from outside, it will cost 40 billion NT dollars, but when we return it to the client after recycling and refining, after counting the recycling process, we save the total of 350,000 tons of carbon, which is equivalent to 900 dying forest parks. Relying on refining and recycling technology, many orders from high-end semiconductor companies have been received. 
as upstream manufacturers respond to 2050 global net zero carbon emission target as part of the green supply chain, solar applied materials technology must regulate itself and follow by the rules. Actually, one of our very important customers, TSMC, actually talked about the carbon footprint for 700 companies and started to do carbon rights and carbon neutrality. This is what we are currently preparing for. We hope to contribute to Taiwan's green semiconductor industry to be a model for the circular economy. The circular economy is a new guide for human survival, and the technology industry is the first to take the lead. We are the first technology company, or the first international manufacturer, to support the Taiwanese government's policy announcement. Microsoft, with more than 4 million servers in more than 70 regions around the world, implemented an internal carbon fee system as early as 2012, showing its ambition to go green. By 2030, we hope to be both carbon and water neutral. For the water part, we will contribute more water, and as much water as we use, we will return more water to nature. The same is true for waste. By 2030, our internal products will have the goal of creating zero waste. Internationally, the clear goal of carbon neutrality and the regulation of enterprises have inspired Taiwanese industries to get started. Taiwan, Microsoft, Delta, TSMC, AUO, Lighton, ASUS, Pegatron and Acer form the Taiwan Climate Alliance, allowing the, requiring the cooperation of downstream third-party manufacturers to reduce carbon. Not only is Taiwan our important customer, but also a very important partner. We can all work together through the cloud as we integrate our entire database to help our partners have a system to save costs, as much cost as possible, and pursue automated technologies related to sustainable development. The Taiwan Climate Alliance, with meteorological expert Peng Qiming serving as the Secretary General, operates as a legal corporation. The initial set of goals is to jointly advance towards the goals of RE100 and EV100. If our company wants to deal with it in the future, it must be low carbon. RE100 is a very clear solution. Next, we can see this carbon reduction effort will generate great demand for the Taiwan carbon emission trading market and green electricity. This will be a help to our government. Taiwan's heavyweight technology industry has formed alliance to help the government accelerate the development of renewable energy and propose a more active carbon reduction policy, allowing Taiwan to stand in this respect on the international stage. Taipei City Hospital successfully completed the vaccination work in five Jinsa Holes in New Taipei City. The medical team went to each Jinsa Hole to thank the volunteers' help. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next time.